Hi, welcome to Learn the Stats. Today we're going to be going over examples for the binomial distribution. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments section. I typically answer them within 24 hours, and it always helps if you like and subscribe. So we, we have this equation here, and this equation is full of letters. What do these letters mean? So I'm going to break down what these letters mean so that you can better understand how to apply this with the examples. N is the total number of trials. X is the number of successes. And to help with that, we also need to understand what the probability of success is. Q is 1 minus P, or the probability of failure. And then we have N of X, which is N factorial over X factorial times the quantity N minus X factorial. So that's to help with understanding what the binomial coefficient is, or the, the combination because sometimes it's written instead of the n of x that I have there. So both ways are fine. I'm just writing it out to help with, with understanding. Now let's get into the examples. This first example is about a situation that I know a lot of people have been in. Uh, maybe you have an exam or a quiz that you didn't study for, and you're just guessing, and you want to know what the probability that you'll actually get a certain score and this is exactly that, that question, that situation. You are taking an exam with seven questions. Each question has five answers with only one correct answer. Find the probability of answering three correctly by making random guesses. So by the question, we know a lot of things. Uh, we actually know all the different letters in the formula. There are seven questions, so n equals seven. We want three correct answers. So x equals 3. The probability of getting a success is 0.2 because out of five options for each question, there's only one correct answer. So 1 divided by 5 is 0.2. And then that means that q is 0.8. And so the probability is x equals 3. That's how you would write that, and that's how you would see that if it was asked in a formal way on, a, on an exam. Let's go with the binomial coefficient first at the very beginning of the, the formula. 7 choose 3. So this is what it looks like. 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is at the top. I just decided to keep the factorial there for 4 because I wanted to show you kind of a uh, simplistic way of dealing with this. And then on the bottom we have 3 times 2 times 1 times 7 minus 3 factorial. And that simplifies to 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 factorial over 3 times 2 times 1 times 4 factorial. And so I think you can see where these things cross out. The 4 factorials equal to 1, so you can write them off. And then we know 3 times 2 times 1 is 6, so we can write those off as 1. And so at the end, what we have is 7 times 5, which is 35. From there, it's just plug and chug. You have everything you need, and you just put it into the equation. And so we have p of 3 equals 35 times 0.2 to the third power times 0.8 to the fourth power. And after you put this in your calculator and you figure it out, because you're not going to be doing this by hand. You're going to be doing this by calculator. And if you're doing it by hand, shame on your professor. The answer here is 0.114688 or about 0.115. Or if you want to write it as a percentage, 11.5%. So if you wanted exactly three correct in this question, it would be 11.5%. Let's go on to the next question. A store has sold five items today. The return rate of sales is 0.15. Find the probability of two or fewer returns of the five items sold today. So this is a situation where it's going to look like something it's not. And the reason why I'm saying it that way is because failure here means success in the equation, in the formula. Because what we care about is how many things are going to be returned to us, not how many things are going to remain sold. So if that makes sense. Because remaining sold will typically be understood as something that you're, uh, that's the success. That's what you want. But because this equation, the way it's worded and the way it's, it's used in different classes, this type of question will come up, or if the professor is really trying to get you to push your understanding, this type of question will come up. We know five items have been sold, so n equals five. 
and we're looking for the probability of two or fewer. So what does that mean? It means we need the probability of uh, x equals 2, x equals 1, and x equals 0. And we know the probability of success is 0.15, that the return of sales is 15%. And then we know, you know, 1 minus 0.15 is q equals 0.85 or 85% of our sales are final, they don't come back. And, go, and so you can kind of see the mind game here. Let's walk through it. Uh, it's important to note you need to be consistent um, with how you're doing this, because if not, you're going to lose you're going to lose the focus. So how you would write this is the probability of x is less than or equal to 2, which is the probability of 0 plus the probability of 1 plus the probability of 2. Just like before, we're going to go into the binomial coefficient, and I'm going to write it the exact same way. And as you can see, 5 times 4 times 3 factorial over 2 times 1 times 3 factorial. The 3 factorials uh, equal to 1, and then we have 5 times 4 divided by 2 times 1, or 2. 4 can be divided by 2, so you end up just with 5 times 2 at the top to give you 10. From there, we just plug and chug because we know for this one it's x equals 2. So we have 10 times 0.15 squared times 0.85 to the third. And after putting that into your calculator, you get 0.13817.8125. Now, what's important here is you really don't want to approximate. You don't want to round yet, because if you if you do round, uh, that can cause you problems later when you finally summarize what's going on. So just like last time, doing the binomial coefficient in the front, 5 times 4 factorial over 1 factorial times 5 minus 1 factorial equals 5 times 4 factorial over 1 factorial times 4 factorial, which with the force canceling out, you get 5 over 1, which equals 5. You put that in the equation for x equals 1 or the probability of 1, it equals 5 times 0.15 to the 1 times 0.85 to the 4th, or 0 0.39150468.75. All right, so last one, we have 5 to 0. What's that look like? 5 factorial over 0 factorial times 5 minus 0 factorial. And so instead of writing 0 factorial the second time, I just wanted to emphasize that 0 factorial is 1. And so uh, that's what that is, just letting you know if you didn't know that already. So you have 5 factorial over 5 factorial times 1, which is just 5 factorial, which gives you 1. So the probability of 0 coming back to the store equals 1 times 0.15 to the 0 times 0.85 to the 5th. Now, point anything to the 0 is 1. So you can just treat that as 1 if you want. I just wrote that here just to, to be consistent. Uh, so we get 0 0.4437053125. So let's kind of summarize this. We have the probabilities of 2, 1, and 0. What does that add up to? So the probability of x less than or equal to 2 equals p of 0 plus p of 1 plus p of 2 equals 0 0.97338825. And this is where you finally round it, uh, which gives you 0.973. The answer to this is you have about a 97% chance that 2, 1, or 0 items will be brought back to the store. All right, let's go on to the third one. The third example is the first example just said in a different way. Everything is basically the same except the final fine. And so let's just walk through this really fast. You are taking an exam with seven questions. So that's the same. Each question has five answers with only one correct answer. That's the same. Find the probability of answering at least one correctly by making random guesses. So instead of looking for exactly three or exactly two or four or five, you're looking for an at least. You need at least this many correct to keep your current grade in the class. So there's a bunch of situations where this would apply. In fact, this is probably the question that you would ask if you're trying to guess in an exam that you didn't study for. And this is how you would approach it. So we know n is 7 and that x is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And we still know that probability that those successes are 0.2 given the five questions. And so pro probability of failure is 0 
Now it's very important to note that uh, the binomial distribution is symmetrical. And so because it's symmetrical, we're going to be able to do a little trick here to simplify what we're trying to do. The probability of x is greater than or equal to 1 equals 1 minus the probability of x is less than 1. So instead of calculating 1 through 7 and adding them all up, which you can do if you want to take the time to do that, uh, you only have to calculate the probability of 0 because that's the only one that's less than 1. So this simplifies very nicely. So 7 choose 0 is 7 factorial over 1 times 7 factorial, which gives us 1. The probability of 0 is 1 times 0.2 to the 0 times 0.8 to the 7th, or 0 0.2097152. So just a reminder, don't round at this point. You round after you subtract it from 1. So the probability of x greater than or equal to 1 equals 1 minus 0 0.2097152, which gives us 0 0.7902848, or 0 0.790, now, obviously using significant figures here for all those physics and chemistry students. This is the probability that you would have at least one correct answer on that exam. So it's pretty good. It's better than three-fourths. I hope this was helpful, and if it was helpful, please like and subscribe. It really does help the channel. Uh, I'll be putting more videos out on a regular basis dealing with the binomial distribution as well as the normal distribution. And I'll probably throw in like Pareto distribution too, the 80-20 distribution. If you have any other suggestions, I'd love to hear them because I do regularly make videos based on suggestions and I typically tag the person who asked the questions. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down in the comment section. I get to them within about a day, sometimes sooner. Thank you for watching and stay nerdy, my friends.